Hi, so this video is going to show you some of the new features that you can have to help you um, run a Google Meet better. So I'm just going to go open a Google Meet. You won't see anyone in it, it'll just be me. Uh, I'm just going to go to new meeting, but you can do it with ones that you've already obviously started and got people in. So I'm going to start an instant meeting. Here we go, to see me. Okay, so here we go. Here I am. I'm in my office, obviously, um, and I'm going to show you some of the new features because they're pretty cool. So what you need to do is if you go down to the bottom right of your screen here, there is um, a button. After the chat button, there is a button that is now called activities. It looks like a triangle, a square, and a circle. So if you click on that, it will give you the list of activities that you can now do. Now, you will only have these options in our school if you are in juniors or a specialist. Um, other people, it's whether you've got the um, upgrades in um, Google Workspace, okay? So you've now got breakout rooms, polls, uh, Q&As, and everybody normally will just have recording and whiteboarding. They're, all, they're there for everybody usually. So I'm just gonna talk you through some of those. So breakout rooms are to enable you to put your class into groups so they can work together and then you as the um, lead on that can jump between the different rooms. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to set those up now. So you just click on breakout rooms. You can do this before and I'll make another video before um, to show you how you set it up before you're live. But you click this button, set up breakout rooms if you haven't done already. Now. The number of rooms is the number of groups. The number of rooms doesn't count your main room. So your main room is what I'm in now, and the breakout rooms are the additional ones. So however many you want, you can just click like that, okay? So I'm just gonna put it for two at the moment just to show you. Now, if you are in a call already with lots of children, so you wanna launch it because your class is already there, all their names of children that are in the call will already be here in the main call. So you can be chatting with them and setting it up already, they will appear there. I haven't got anyone else there because obviously no one else is in the call with me. And if you wanted to, what you could do is obviously go into the call first and set it up. Um, but you can do it in a different way. I'll, sh I'll make another video. So at the moment, I haven't got anybody in this call. So it means that I can't put names in so what would happen is you would have a list of children who are in there with you and basically you could just put their names into a room. So if Sam was in with me, I could put type in Samuel and it would come up with his name. Obviously no one is in the call with me at the moment, so I can't put anyone in those rooms. So basically you would do this with them, yeah, drag and drop them into, so I'm now not in the main room, I, I'm going into a breakout room. You don't need to do it with yourself, okay? So you would do that with your class. The other thing you could do is put this, click this shuffle button, which is handy, and it will put all of the um, people into breakout rooms for you. So that's a quick version if you don't want them in specific um, groups. Um, so yeah, you'll see all the names. Obviously, I can't do it now because I don't have loads of people with me, but again, just to show you, you just pick them up like that and drop them into whatever room you want them in. Okay, so that'll be quite a quick thing. I recommend dragging and dropping them rather than typing. So once you've done that, you can also set a timer. So say you want them to collaborate for 10 minutes, really handy and it really kind of replicates what you're doing in a classroom. You could say, okay, you've got 10 minutes to talk about this task. I click this to say end after that time, 10 minutes. I click okay, and it will set that timer. So when you click open rooms, it will have a timer counting down at the top of the screen so that they know they've got that amount of time to work on it. After that 10 minutes, it will automatically stop the breakout rooms and then put them all back into the main call. You, once they're in the break and breakout rooms, once you click open rooms, you will be able to jump between the rooms to talk to them. You will also be able to still swap the names around. So say um, you'd organized it beforehand, you could still swap the group and, and people hadn't turned up, for example, you can still swap the groups later on. Okay, and you can click clear here, it will clear all the breakout rooms of names if you want to start again with them. Okay, so hopefully that's self-explanatory. You can always come out to this breakout rooms when it says open rooms, I'll show you. So I can then 
now jump. If I click join, it will take me to breakout room run. If I click join, it will take me to breakout room two. So you can keep jumping between those. And also it will show you the timer. Now, when they're in the room, it will come back to, uh, you can, they can always come back to the main room to ask you questions, but I recommend that you just jump between the rooms, okay? And when you, if you're finished, and you wanna finish early, you feel like everyone's kind of finished, you can just click close rooms and everyone will be asked to return back, okay? And you can close it all and everyone will come back. So as, as you can see, the countdown is letting them know that. All right, so you have total control. You can change those within the call. I'll make another video about how you set them up beforehand if you don't wanna do it inside Google Meet. Okay, next thing you can do, polls. So if you want to find out answers from children, you can click start a poll. You can ask them a question. Uh, uh, say you want to do a multiple, what is five times five? Is it 125? Is it 23? Is it 14? Is it 20? Is it 25? Okay, so then you can just click, you can save it if you're doing it beforehand, or you can just click launch, and that will show up for everyone. As you can see, it's live, and if you want everyone to see the results, you probably don't want them to see it as they're doing it, unless it's not a, not a, a fact-based answer. Um, show everyone the results, we'll show it live as well. You can end the poll, and then I would then show people the results. And it's gonna be a really handy way to check for understanding for children if you just wanna do a quick, like a whiteboard basically, show me your answer. I mean, it is multiple choice. That one is multiple choice. Um, so yeah, okay. So that's poll, so that's really handy and very easy to run. And Q&A. So that creates the children can ask you directly questions on there it's a bit like the chat feature but turn on q a so everyone will be able to see those questions if you open q a and they'll be able to type questions um, and the other children will be able to type questions so you can also type if you want to ask a question theirs will look a bit like that they just won't have this part here but they can click ask a question and they can put those questions into there um, and people will be able to see it it's not uh not so much like the chat feature Okay, and you can turn that off there. Okay, Q&A is now closed. So that will create a log of all of the questions and you can also sort them by uh, oldest first, newest first, unanswered questions. So it will come up once you put a question up, It will people will be able to answer those questions as well. So another feature that you'll have is this one, um, this whiteboarding one as well. Recording a whiteboarding will be available for everyone because it's on the uh, basic package as of uh, Google Workspace as long as you um, own the Meet. Okay, if you're going into someone's Meet, you won't necessarily have those options. But we're going into whiteboarding. Okay, so you can start a Jamboard and a jam board is where the children can all write on it um, together. So start a new jam board. Personally, I would set my jam board up first. Um, but what it will do, it, was, it will send them all the link to this jam board. Please make sure what you'll find is that um, sometimes it doesn't give uh, permission for everyone to draw on it. So if that happens to you, the children are saying to you, I can't do it, I can't write on it. So can you say it's private only to me? Click that share button. Sorry, it's taking a long time to load for me today. Click the share button and then what you're gonna do is change the link to anyone with the link and you want it to change it to, they can edit it if you want them all to write on it. Okay, done. Okay, so now everyone can um, write on that. You may want to prepare those jam boards beforehand. And if you do, then you can choose your jam board from a drive. And can you see that comes up now and will be linked to um, this meet. So that's all the things recording you obviously will know about already. You can record um, and put your recordings up for the children. So. Those are all the things. Just so you know, your polls and um, Q and A's, once you've run them in your meet, when you come off of your meet, 
um, it will automatically send you those uh, those answers. It sends it to you by email and your Q&A ones, your questions and everything. So you get to keep them after the meet has happened. So even when you close it down, you've still got all that data. So that's really handy. Okay, so that's the main new features in Google Meet. Um, yeah, I hope to have fun playing with them. It definitely will help um, kind of collaborating more and making making it more like a classroom setting, making it more us more able to do the things that we do in a classroom setting. Okay, thanks, bye.